Development hell has become the go-to industry term to describe usually overly ambitious projects that spend a prolonged period of time being worked on. These projects usually involve big deviations in creative direction, changes in the team handling the work and scripts, and the need to create or learn entire new pieces of software during development, before finally hitting shelves. Sometimes these delays are worth the wait, sometimes they're a huge bomb, and for some, we're still waiting. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 video games stuck in development the longest. Number 10, Tekken Cross Street Fighter. Crossovers have become commonplace amongst the fighting genre, and in 2010 it looked as though players would be getting not one but two titles from some of the very best in the business. At Comic-Con that year, Street Fighter 4 producer Yoshinori Ono and Tekken producer Katsuhiro Harada announced two crossover titles for the game's two universes. But while Street Fighter Cross Tekken was released in March 2012, fans are still waiting for the Tekken alternative. Unlike the Street Fighter title, the crossover was set to feature a 3D game engine to mirror Capcom series. However, since the first announcement of the game, development has been a slow and frustrating process. Having to move over to the new 8th generation of consoles, Katsuhiro Harada announced that the game was only 30% complete as of 2016, when it had first been halted. Despite this, Harada has never officially given up on someday releasing the game to the public. In June 2021, the director mentioned the game again on his Harada's Bar Radio YouTube show, in that no one really knew what was going on with the game anymore, but that it hadn't been officially cancelled yet. He also claimed that some of the animations he had designed for the game had actually been used in Tekken 7. Number 9, Scalebound. The concept of Scalebound can be traced all the way back to Platinum Games' founding in 2006, but it didn't officially enter development until 2013, following the completion of The Wonderful 101. However, despite director Hideki Kamiya proclaiming the game to be a dream come true, the combination of how ambitious a title Scalebound was, along with the lack of experience in this genre Platinum has, saw the title cancelled in January 2017. Some were quick to point the finger at Microsoft for Scalebound shelving, but Platinum have always been quick to shoulder the blame, with studio head Atsushi Inaba conceding the team weren't experienced enough to produce a game with so much emphasis on online features. Despite this, whilst the game remains a Microsoft intellectual property, Kamiya has reiterated as recently as February 2022 that he remains totally serious about releasing Scalebound. While we can't fully call this in-development hell, Scalebound keeps getting brought up for a reason. There's too much of a good thing here to entirely go to waste. Number 8, Diablo 3. Development for Diablo 3 quickly began in 2001 after the release of its predecessor, but it would take over a decade to reach consumers. The game wasn't even announced by Blizzard until the Blizzard Worldwide Invitational in 2008, but a variety of technical challenges and priorities elsewhere around the company meant that development progress would be very slow. Diablo 3 would eventually be released for PC in May 2012. What's more, in 2012 it was revealed that Diablo 3 would be making a jump to consoles, with the PS3 and 360 getting their copy in 2013, PS4 and Xbox One in 2014, and Nintendo Switch in November 2018. Number 7, Star Citizen. One of the most ambitious, albeit controversial, titles that has been stuck in development hell, Star Citizen has been in the works since 2010. Pre-production on the game began back then, however it was in September 2012 that its reputation began to make a splash in the gaming space. Announced via a successful crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter that raised $2 million, Cloud Imperium Games' title was set to be one of the most expansive and ambitious video games ever released. Seamless space-to-ground transitions, PvP modes, a cooperative campaign featuring Mark Hamill, and huge space ships with explorable interiors have all been teased. However, progress on Star Citizen has been slow, to be generous, since being opened up to the public. Despite the Kickstarter closing in 2014 in line with that initially planned release date, Cloud Imperium have continued to raise funds by selling various in-game items. To date, estimates have put the total amount raised for the game somewhere in the $500 million mark. Raising plenty of concerns over whether or not the players who have invested for over a decade now will ever get their hands on a finished copy of the game. Number 6, Mother 3. Development for a sequel to Mother 2 began soon after the game's release, with the majority of the same team working on the title. The game was designed for the 64 Double D add-on for the Nintendo 64, but the leap from 2D graphics to 3D ended up causing some major headaches in the development department, putting the game on hold over the course of the lifespan of the 64 and Nintendo's next home console, the GameCube. 
Developers Brownie Brown and HAL Laboratory persisted, eventually releasing a top-down 2D RPG for the Game Boy Advance in 2006, 12 years after the release of Mother 2. A Japanese-only release, Nintendo reportedly scrapped English localization due to its emphasis on bereavement as a central tone and the inclusion of animal cruelty and drug abuse. As such, Mother 3 is one of the last big talked-about games resigned to the East that has a sizable portion of fans in the West, still waiting to play an official copy. Number 5, Duke Nukem Forever Duke Nukem was on top of the world across the late 90s, with strong sales of the iconic and still pretty fun Duke Nukem 3D hitting 3.5 million units. However, it would take over 15 years for Duke Nukem Forever to finally land. With 3D Realms once again taking the lead on development, it would take 8 years for the first snippet of content to even be revealed. The company was then downsized, leading to 2K Games acquiring the rights and Gearbox taking over. Interestingly, a version of Forever from 2001 when 3D Realm still had control was actually leaked in 2022. Duke Nukem Forever as we know it overall though finally released in the summer of 2011, though most agree it wasn't worth the wait. Still, the fact that this project survived so many members of staff, entire companies changing hands and still emerged in a state more playable than Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is pretty incredible. Number 4, Metroid Dread 2002's Metroid Fusion was a stellar side-scroller for the Game Boy Advance, winning handheld Game of the Year at the 2002 Interactive Achievement Awards on the back of some slick controls, some awesome visuals and some awesome music. With the game making a splash in the handheld market, Yoshio Sakamoto began working on a sequel for the Nintendo DS. Between 2004 and 2008, there were at least two different attempts by Sakamoto to get the game out of development. However, hardware restraints meant that the project bounced from delay to delay. For Sakamoto, the game needed to be jam-packed and full of tension to accompany the plotline of Samus being stuck on an unexplored alien planet, a requirement that he felt the DS and even its successor the 3DS just couldn't provide. The legendary status of Fusion and its fear-based gameplay premise certainly kept hype for the game alive, and fans would eventually get their hands on the exquisite Metroid Dread 16 years later. Number 3, Dwarf Fortress Dwarf Fortress marks a curious moment in how video games are developed and released. An indie roguelike created by brothers Tarn and Zach Adams, it sees players take control of a group of dwarves and attempt to build the biggest stronghold possible. Complex and layered, it was a title that immediately garnered a lot of warm receptions from critics and anyone else able to get their hands on it. Dwarf Fortress first began development in 2002, releasing an alpha version for players three years later. Despite only being a text-based title, the development team at Bay 12 Games have continually brought updates, with Ton Adams claiming it won't be complete for at least another 20 years. Full respect for committing to the game's many layers and complexities, but for those who have been playing since 2005, there's gotta be a sense of it being done, as Dwarf Fortress is largely regarded as finished by the community. Number 2, Star Fox 2. The classic 3D rail shooter series Star Fox began in 1993 with a release on the SNES and still stands as a landmark moment in the history of the industry for introducing 3D graphics to a 2D dominated market. Development for the sequel reportedly began soon after the release of the original, with Nintendo EAD in Japan and UK based Argonaut Software taking the lead on the project. 1995 saw a playable demo at the Winter Consumer Electronics Show, teasing two player modes, random encounters, and a revamped strategic map system. Unfortunately, development coincided sided with the industry's overall transition to 3D, and now up against the likes of Tomb Raider, Resident Evil, Quake and more PlayStation hits, Nintendo knew they'd be laughed out the room. Star Fox 2 was silently killed off, laying dormant for over two decades, until it finally released on 2017's SNES Classic, now sitting on Nintendo Switch Online from December 2019. And number 1, Beyond Good and Evil 2. 2003's Beyond Good and Evil is the shiniest hidden gem Ubisoft have ever put out. Playing as investigative journalist Jade, the game was critically acclaimed on release, earning nominations for Best Sound Design, Original Music, Best Action Game and Best Game of 2003 at many award shows at the time. Despite this, sales just weren't there, and with the first game meant to be a trilogy, in 2008 Ubisoft still teased that a sequel was in the works. Almost a decade of silence followed before we got eyes on an in-engine demo at E3 2017, showcasing potential jetpack exploration and coming with a lot of talk about what else might be in store. Sadly, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is just another one of those games forever in the background, despite various assets actually being seen. Its continued in-development time has now beaten Duke Nukem Forever's 15-year run, and honestly, who even knows if this will ever come out? And those are our picks for various games that have been in development the longest. Let me know your favourites down in the comments below and which games you're still looking forward to eventually playing. For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. Please subscribe to the WhatCulture Gaming Podcast and I'll catch you soon.